am here um, representing Schweden County Farm Bureau, who brought to you Egg in the Classroom. And this is actually Classroom on the Farm. So we're hoping that you'll get a real life perspective of what it's like to be on a dairy farm. And um, the folks that are surrounding you here in the tent are volunteers. Maybe some of them are the actual farm family members of Honky Farms. Maybe some of them are part of Sheboygan County Farm Bureau, which is a farm organization. Some of them are um, in the profession of agriculture. Um, I see that we have our veterinarian and our nutritionist, and um, we also have some feed advisors that are here with us. Um, right next to me is Nikki. She is an FFA student at Random Lake High School. So a little south of here. She volunteered to help me while we wait for the next buses to come in. Um, so we thought we'd get you started with a, with a song that you might um, be familiar with. And so we'll let this group kind of come in, work their way in, and find a spot. It's called the Wisconsin Milk Song. And so we need you to kind of turn to the person next to you and say, you're my partner for this song. All right. And it's called the Wisconsin Milk Song. And I need you to put your hands in this position. Hold, hold your lips a second. There you go. We're going to put our hands in this position. OK, Nikki, show us how we do that. First, we're going to do this symbol, which is don't give me no pop, no pop because it's supposed to look like a soda can. So we say, don't give me no pop, no pop. Don't give me no tea, no tea. Just give me that milk. Oh, she made an udder. Do you kind of see the two teeth? So then your partner is gonna milk your udder. Just give me that milk, and then you go, moo, 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 moo. Wisconsin milk song. Give me an M. M. Give me a silent M or a quiet M. All right. Don't give me no pop. No pop. No, give me no tea. No tea. Just give me that milk. Moo, 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 moo. Wisconsin milk. Moo, 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 moo. Give me an I. Quiet I. Wisconsin milk song, here we go. Don't give me no pop, no pop. Don't give me no tea, no tea. Just give me that milk. Moo, 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 moo. Wisconsin milk, moo, 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 moo. Okay, I want you here to sing it with me, okay? Here we go, give me an L. L. Quiet L. All right, don't give me no pop, no pop. Don't give me no tea, no tea, just give me that milk. Moo, 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 Wisconsin milk. Moo, 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 moo. Give me a K. K. Quiet K. Quiet. All right, here we go. Don't give me no pop, no pop. Don't give me no tea, no tea, just give me that milk. Moo, 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 Wisconsin milk. Moo, 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 moo. What does it spell? singing that I'm going to ask Farmer Jack, are you going to give a welcome to the group? Can you please put your hands together for Farmer Jack? Welcome to one and all. We're really happy that you are here visiting our family dairy farm. We hope you have a very enjoyable time. We want you to have some fun today, ask questions, and we're excited that you're here. We're glad we have sunshine for you. Just have a really good time today, and we're just really glad you came to visit us too. And we hope that when you leave today, you had a really happy day spending on a dairy farm. We consider ourselves a dairy farm family because our number one source of income we produce milk. We sell milk 
every day of the year. We produce about a semi-load of milk a day, or a little bit more some days, and our milk always goes into fluid bottling. So if you guys ever drink Dean's milk, our milk is generally in a Dean's milk jug container. So my job on the farm, I focus on cow health, cow comfort, anything to do with a dairy cow, that's my job. I make sure that all the cows are taken care of properly every day of the year. I do very little tractor work. I don't help plant crops. I don't help harvest crops. My number one goal is to make sure our dairy cows are taken care of to the best of my ability every day. And some of the things that I do on the farm, I make sure our cows are all kept nice and clean and they all have a nice barn to lay down in and where they eat their feed and where they socialize. So I spend a lot of time making sure every cow has that opportunity to have a nice clean stall to lay down. Plenty of feed is available so she goes to eat. There's feed to, there to eat. I make sure that each group of cows has a three different waters where they can go and drink water. We make sure those waters are kept nice and clean so they always have a nice, fresh, clean source of water to drink from. So that's all part of keeping our cows nice and clean and a nice place to lay down. Then I make sure our cows all have a nice, healthy diet where the cows eat free choice basically every hour of the day. There's always feed there that they can eat. And they go eat individually. If, if they're hungry, they go eat. If they want to go drink water, they go drink water. If they want to go back and lay down, they all have their individual stall to go lay down on. The stalls all have rubber mattresses with a nice pine wood, soft wood surface bedding to keep the stalls nice and dry. Some of our stalls are water beds, so some of the cows have the opportunity to lay on water bed mattresses. <coughs> and with this healthy diet, we have a nutritionist on our farm at least once a week, if not twice or three times a week, he comes out checking to make sure he knows what our feed ingredients have. We know how much protein is in the cow feed. We know how much energy is in the cow feed that they're eating. We know how much fiber is in the cow feed. We even know what the moisture content is of the cow feed. So we know everything because we're weighing all the feed stores as we mix it. We also re-weigh what they don't eat every morning so we know what the refusal is that they did not eat. So that's all part of that healthy diet I'm talking about. And then we work very closely with our cow doctor called the veterinarian. He is scheduled to come here at least once a week on a Monday or a Tuesday. And we do a herd health program. And if we knew it, need ex extra somebody helping us with a different problem during the week, we just make a phone call and we make some emergency calls. If we need extra help, we always have a cow doctor available to come out and help with any problem we might have. So when a cow doctor is here at that scheduled visit, we're usually pregnancy checking a lot of cows. We want to make sure that cow has a baby calf almost once a year. So sometimes it might take longer than 12 months before that next baby calf is born, but if it takes 13 or 14 months, that's okay. But we try to get her to have another baby calf every year, and that helps keep our milk production up. <coughs> so Jim and I... We have we consider the generational multi generations on our farm. So our grandpa bought the farm in 1919. Then my dad was farming here. We were born here in 1952. So we've never worked any place else. We've always been here working on the farm. Now our kids are fourth generation, the third generation on this farm. Our grandchildren represent the fifth generation. But our grandparents and great great grandparents had another farm north of here, and we also operate that land, but we have no cattle or buildings there right now. But these are what the buildings looked like here in 1970s. This is the house that I live in today, but these other silos, the old barn, these silos, this little pig barn, the trees, it's all gone. It's starting to change. So we're, we're building different barns for better cow comfort. And these are the two silos that tipped over last year on our farm. If you saw that area where the machinery is over there, these two silos tipped over and it crushed this barn. So now we're going to be cleaning up all this rest. This is still standing. We're going to take the rest of this down. We're going to be building a new structure later, later this summer. These two silos are okay, but now we also took down the cement silo. That's gone too. So this has all been 
going to be very moving. Things will change again this year. So in the year 2000, we built these barns in the milking parlor. So August 7, 2013, it will be August this summer, we've been in these new facilities for almost 13 years now. The cows stay in the barn where they eat and lay down, and then they walk through these different hallways, this hallway, and they get into this area called our holding area. And this is where the cows get milked three times a day, and then they go back again to where they came from. They always go back to the same pen where they originated. So we're actually sitting right here. This is where we are. And this building is our calf barn where the calves are all kept in. This is the middle barn that we were just looking at. This is called our calving area. It's the maternity ward. I call it the Hotel Hilton. It's really a really nice, comfortable place for the cows to have their baby calves. And this is where we can work with them individually. So when that baby calf is born, we don't just give it a name. We put an ear tag in each of its ears. And these tags will stay in as long as this baby calf stays on the farm. She might be here 10 years, or it might be a shorter period of time. But this is her official ID number. It gets punched in their computer system. So if she ever has any medical problems or anything that she got injured, all her medical history is recorded, and we know it just like the doctors keep records on you guys. <coughs> Our cows come to the milking parlor where they stand 12 in a row to get milk. This is the front picture. This is the back picture where the cows are being milked by our two employees. And they come here three times a day. Every eight hours we start milking again. One of my jobs on the farm is giving cows a haircut, just like if you go to the barber and get a haircut. I take a clipper very similar to your barber, and I'll clip off their winter hair coat because they grow longer hair for the winter months. If I take a clipper and clip her off nice and clean, it makes it easier for us to produce a better quality milk because the cow is nice and clean to start with. You notice how nice her udder looks? So when she comes to the milking parlor three times a day, she's producing about 35 pounds of milk each milking. So we times three, so it's over 100 pounds of milk a day that this cow is producing. And our bigger barns all have a lot of fans built into the barns. So there's 41 48-inch fans with the five on the outside rows. So when it gets really warm, we draw air through the barn, so there's about a seven-mile breeze with these fans. These are exhaust fans. It's actually blowing the hot, warm air back outside again. So it's very comfortable in our barns for the cows. So when they're standing here eating, this is their feed source where they eat every day. There's also a little pipe on top that provides a little water sprinkler if it's really warm. And we got extra fans in the barn as well. So if they're not eating, the cows back up and they go lay down in their individual stalls or they go by their waters. There's three waters in each pen where they drink nice, fresh, cool water and we wash those waters every week at least once, if not twice a week. And then we have our calves. I think you saw the calf barn already when you got here. So we put a wool blanket on the calves during the winter months. And these wool blankets help keep the baby calves warm just like if we wear a sweater when it's cold outside. Those wool blankets help keep that calf nice and warm. We do show some of our cows at the Sheboygan County Fair over Labor Day weekend. So that's one of our pastime projects. It's kind of fun that we do that. And here's a family picture. My family has the black shirts. My brother Jim's family has the red shirts. The picture is two years old, so I have four grandchildren pictured but I'll have number six grandchild arriving in August. And Jim has three grandsons, but he already has two more, so there's five grandsons. This is an outdated picture. And this is Cole, Courtney's son. He's working by the projector. Cole shows some of our dairy heifers as 4-H projects. So this one, he was at Madison two years ago, showing at the World Dairy Expo. In two years' time, though, this heifer has changed, so she's actually just had her second calf. She's one of the cows now in the big barn that's getting milk three times a day. <coughs> Courtney's husband, Chris, is our veterinarian that's here at once a week. So we always have a doctor on the farm helping us with different things going on every week. 
Okay. Here you see the word 4-H. This is what Cole is involved with. He's a member of 4-H. And he's got dairy as one of his projects that he exhibits at the county fair. But 4-H has a wide variety of different projects that you can choose from. So you can be involved with 4-H and not just have to be able to show a cap. There's so many different things in 4-H that you can get involved with. As you get a little bit older, you join Future Farmers of America, and that's a high school organization. There, too, you can take different projects to learn more about agriculture. Because agriculture is a really, really good field industry to get involved with. There's going to be more and more people populating the world. So agriculture is really important. That it's going to provide jobs. As you get out of school, you may consider agriculture it might be a good job opportunity for you. And if you join 4-H and FVA, it gives you a really good background to get some information on what a job might be there for you after high school or college is over for you. But agriculture is really a good field to consider because it's going to be a, a booming industry for years to come. As the population keeps increasing, agriculture is going to be supplying the food needs of the world. So we've changed a lot on our family dairy farm. Things don't stay constant very long. Buildings change. Our families keep increasing. So there's a lot of things to look forward to in the years to come, I think. You have entered, you have entered the milking parlor at the Hunky Farm. They milk about 625 cows three times a day. And it takes about four and a half to five minutes to, to milk a cow that gives six to 10 gallons of milk. But at this farm, there are many cows that milk over 150 pounds. So I'm sure it takes them a little bit longer. As you can see, the units are all put on. You can see the milk go through the tubes. It is immediately sent to a refrigerated bulk tank where it's cooled immediately. Now, do you know the reason why they try and cool milk quickly? So it can keep fresh. So it keeps fresh and low bacteria, yes. When it leaves here, a big tanker truck picks it up and it's sent to the dairy, and at the dairy, it's homogenized and pasteurized. As you can see, when the new cows come in, they're all washed off with this green gun that she has. There's automatic antiseptic pumped along with water and that will clean the udder and the teats before before they milk. This is very important to have a clean udder so there's no bacteria getting along in that milk line. And you notice also she's washing down the units to keep everything nice and clean so that when you buy this milk from the grocery store you know it's good clean quality milk. Between the three shifts there's a three hour period where this no cows in the parlor. They sanitize everything. The units, the stainless steel, the walls. Notice how clean everything looks. Everything is sanitized and clean to make sure you're getting a good quality product. The unit up here sends a digital message to the office as to how many pounds of milk each cow gives. Now if a cow wouldn't be milking up to its capabilities, it may have to be replaced with a new one. Milk is the number one income on this farm. And as you can see by walking around on your tour, that there's a lot of expenses on a farm. The machinery, the upkeep of the buildings, the feed, the cost of labor, the fuel they put in the tractors. Many expenses have to be met. And that's why it's very important for the farm to produce good quality milk because that's what pays the bills. Those cows just got kicked out all at one time. And now the new ones are coming in already. Within 15 seconds, they're ready to milk 12 more cows. Oh, notice this one? It's brown and white. This is the one that gives chocolate milk. Are you listening? This is the cow that gives chocolate milk. And I'm teasing you. <laughs> no, this is called a red and white Holstein. There are other brown cows, not at this farm, but brown cows are Jerseys, Guernseys, and Ayrshires. 
but they raise strictly Holsteins at this farm. And you can notice she's stripping each quarter on, and she's going to wash it with the thing. They also raise animals here not only for production, but they want cows that look nice. They have many 4-H kids that are taking a dairy project that shows some of the honky animals. If you go to the county fair this year and you see honky farms on some of the signs above the cattle, you'll know that those kids showed cattle that came from this farm. Do you notice back there in the holding area, there's a cow chewing her cud. You know that a cow has four compartments to her stomach, right? She's chewing her cud. She just regurgitated the food she ate. She chews it, swallows it, and goes down to the next stomach. This is a way God made cows that they get as much nutrients out of the food she eats to produce milk. When the cows leave the parlor, they go back out and they probably rest. They lay down in the free stalls. They eat more food. They drink fresh water and they get some exercise. And after six hours, they come back in and are milked again. It is very, very important for the farmer to at, at give advice to their employees as many things to be seen that might go wrong. Like if a calf might be sick, it usually has cold ears and a dry nose. But you won't see that unless you learn to recognize these things. Cows here that have mastitis or maybe have an udder infection of some kind will go directly to the dairy hospital and that milk cannot be used to sell to you. Because if it's injected with an antibiotic, one of you may have an allergy to the antibiotic, and that's not good. You may get sick from that. So we cannot sell any milk from a cow that is treated in any way. When the cows leave the parlor, this is very important. And I'm going to show you what this is. You see this? This is an, an antibacterial iodine that's got some skin softener in it. This will seal the end of that tit canal so that when the cows lay out in the yard, no bacteria can get up into that udder. There was not a cow that leaves this parlor without their teats being dipped. It doesn't hurt, it's just a very clear antibacterial product. Very important. And you'll notice that when when these cows are done now, are they done or new? When they're done, they will all be dipped before they're released. Any of you have any questions? Yes? Do humans do that or do the cows just do that? The workers do that. The workers take care of that. Yes? Yes? A cud is the food that they chew, the food that they eat. They chew, it goes down into the stomach, and they burp it up, and they chew it again. It goes into four stomachs. Mm -hmm. Pardon me? It's very hard to get kicked by a cow in the parlor. It's a very, it's a very safe place to milk cows, because there's a bar there's a bar here that prevents their leg from going backwards. How much milk is produced a day? Here I do not know, but it's the, the tank holds almost 6,000 gallons of milk. It varies with the production, with the cows having calves. They, um, they rotate the cows too because cows milk for about 10 months and then when they're, when they're ready to have a calf, they have to rest for two months so that their body builds up nutrients for the, the calf, antibodies so that it has a healthy calf and is able to milk again when it has that calf. When a, when a baby is born, it's called a calf. It turns into a yearling or a heifer at about six to nine months. When it's between 22 and 24 months, it'll have its first calf. When, a cow, when this 
heifer has its first calf and begins to milk, it is called a cow. Any other questions you may have? I'm glad you're all dressed so nice and warm, got boots on. Cold out today, isn't it? I just want to leave you with, with um, a very important statement. It is the, the job of the farmer to produce good quality milk for you to drink. It's very important. Is there any part you like so far on the farm? My part's this part. You like the milking parlor? Good. Oh, it's time to go to your next station, kids. Thank you for listening. Uh, my name's Brian Walsh, and I'm a, a large animal nutritionist. I work for the farm here, putting together what we call diets for the dairy cows. And what school are you from? <laughs> Pardon me? Jefferson. Jefferson? Okay. What, third graders? Yep. Okay. So today, this station is called Cows Need to Eat. So, with that being said, I'm going to need a, a volunteer. Mm, I'll take you, Serena. All right? And what I want you to do is stand right here, and I want you to hold this bowl for me. Okay? Can you do that? G great. Well, every day these cows are fed, and it's kind of, it, it's kind of like, a, a, it's called a TMR, a total mixed ration. I want you to repeat that, TMR. TMR. I can't hear you. Okay, total mixed ration, TMR. So today, we're actually going to put together what these cows eat. We're going to start with some baled hay. Now, in our TMR, total mixed ration, we want about two pounds of baled hay. So we're going to kind of process that a little bit. Okay. And the next ingredient we're going to add is called, what's it called? Hay. Haylage. So we're going to take the haylage, and we're going to feed about 30 pounds of haylage per cow per day. So 2 plus 30 equals what? 32. 32. Very good. Now stay with me on this. All right. The next ingredient we're going to feed is called what? Corn silage. Okay. And the corn silage is the whole corn plant chopped up, cob and all, and it kind of looks like that. And we're going to feed about 40 pounds of corn silage per cow per day. So 32 plus 40 equals what? 72. 72. Remember that number. Okay, the next thing we're going to feed is called what? Snap. Snaplage. Okay, it's an energy source. And it's from the corn plant. And it's just the cob, what we call the tube of the cob, the corn and the husk all grown up. So we're going to feed about 20 pounds of that. So 72 plus 20 is what? 92. 92. Very good. Okay, the next thing we're going to feed is what? Vitamins and minerals. And minerals. That comes from a central plant over in Fond du Lac. And we're going to feed about 3 pounds of that. So what's our TMR at now? 95 pounds. That's quite a bit of feed, and we're not done yet. Next, we're going to go move into some products that are called byproducts. And a byproduct class is, a, is, is something that's left over after a manufacturing process. So one of the byproducts that we feed here is called canola meal. Does mom ever go to the store and buy, like, canola oil for cooking, things like that nature? Uh, <clears throat> And the canola meal looks like this, comes out of probably North Dakota or the, the plains up in Canada, all right? And we're going to feed about three pounds of that. So what's our TMR at? 98. 98? Stay with me. All right, the next thing we're going to feed is called what? 
Okay? And the cotton seed is exactly what, what the name implies. Just that, that comes out of like Mississippi. And you know, if you look at it real close, it kind of looks like those little fuzzy things you clean your ear with, Q tips. Yeah. They feel that. Feel, does it feel fuzzy? Now, cottonseed, you know, it's a byproduct, and we use the fiber in, in my coat, my socks, your teacher's uh, clothes, everybody has cotton. So the byproduct is the seed. So we're going to feed about five pounds of cottonseed. So what's our TMR at? What's our total weight? Oh, pardon me? 103. 103. All right. Very good. Okay, the last ingredient we're going to feed, it's called molasses. Yeah. I think it smells like black licorice. You like black licorice? Can you smell? Smell that. What do you, tell, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Now we're going to feed about two pounds of molasses. All right. It's like syrup. Yeah. It's about 35% straight sugar. Now, I'll hold the bowl and you stir. Okay, we started out this station. The key words were TMR, all right? And the, here's the concept, kids. The concept is, like, I, I like eating Oreos, cookies, but the last cookie always tastes like the first cookie, right? Cheese pizza, the last piece of pizza always tastes like the first piece. So the TMR, the first bite, is gonna always t taste like the last bite and vice versa. You got her stirred up there? Alright, now I want Serena and only Serena to take this bowl over there and dump it in front of that red cow. Everybody stand back. Stand back. Alright. Okay, let's see if she eats it. We kind of spooked them a little bit, that's fine. They'll eat it. Oh, just wait. Here you go. Is this is you gonna eat? Well, I would give this class an A plus today. You guys just fed a cow. Hello, how are you guys today? Good. So, welcome to the farm, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my station. So, I'm the doctor for the cows around here. So, what is my job called? What am I? A doctor for animals, a veterinarian, very good. So I'm the veterinarian here at Honky Farms. And so I'm here every week at least once and sometimes more or times in between, depending on what we have going on, uh, to work with the cows and to make sure they're healthy. And if they do get sick, if we finding ways that we can treat them to help them feel a lot better. So how many of you have been to the doctor's office before? And how many of you, what does the doctor do when you're there? Does the doctor use something like this thing right here? What's this thing called? What's this called? A stethoscope, right? And so what is the doctor listening to when he, they're using the stethoscope? Jacob. Listening to your heart, yep. So I use a stethoscope to listen to a cow or a calf's heart as well to make sure everything's right. What else do we listen to with a stethoscope? Right here. Back there. You're listening to your lungs. We're listening to make sure that your, the lungs are clear to make sure that there's no sickness or any uh, pneumonias. Anything else? What else do we listen to with a stethoscope? Jake. Uh, stomach. Very good. You're listening to the stomach. And so we're listening. When I listen to a cow stomach, I'm listening to make sure that it's moving and it's mixing the feed because they have a big four compartment stomach. And so that's one of the things we have to make sure that it's working right with the cow. And then when you're at the doctor's office, what, at the, sometimes at the end of your visit, you might get a shot, huh? Yeah. Do you like that? No, I don't. Like no, no. I do. But, 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 but why are we doing the shots? What is the, sh what is the shot that you're receiving sometimes? Dylan. Um, it attacks germs. Very good. It's helping you attack germs. And so it's a vaccine or a vaccination. 
and you're getting that to help you prevent you from getting certain illnesses and diseases. And so we do this, we do the same thing with the animals here on the farm. I kept on getting shots. Yeah. So we're we're giving these vaccines, and the baby calves all the way through the cows are getting some of these every year because we're trying to prevent illnesses. But unfortunately, we can't prevent them from getting sick all the time. And so we're using things like the stethoscope or the thermometer. And how do I know if a cow or a calf's not feeling good? Does she moo at me and I can understand her? No. no? How, what might be some ways I'd notice that a cow would be feeling sick? That's a good one. Sometimes her eyes are a little bit droopy. She doesn't look normal. Milk, milk is a good one. Usually they'll give less milk. So when you're in the milking parlor later, you'll see that it keeps track of how much milk they're giving every milking. And so we'll monitor how much milk production they're giving. When they sneeze? When they sneeze, sometimes they'll sneeze or they might have some snot running out of their nose if they're not feeling well. Jake? They might not eat. They may not eat. Yep, very good. So if you look right down here, these cows are in here eating. This is normal behavior we're looking for. So that pen of cows are the cows that had their calves in the past two weeks. And so they're in that pen because we're examining them every day. They were examined all, every cow in there was looked at this morning by some people here on the farm. And we're making sure that they're eating, they're drinking, their eyes are bright, and all of those certain things. So sometimes we find out that cows aren't feeling good and we need to provide some treatments. So I have a few things that we might give a cow for you to look at. And so here are some white pills. This is actually a kind of medicine that you probably have in your house at home. Does anybody have any idea? Sometimes you take these for a headache back there in the back. And what kind of a pill? Jay, oh. Got it? You said it. Aspirin, right. So this is aspirin. This is the same aspirin that you may have in your home. And when, we give, when we're treating a cow, how many of these do you think I need to give a cow? How about over here, Dominic? Four? Pretty good guess. They get four or five of these. And why do I have to give them four or five of these big pills? Be Rose. What do you think? Well, that's a pretty good guess. They have four stomachs, but there's another reason why it takes so many of these big pills. Adrian. We're making them feel better, but the main reason is they're really big, right? They're a lot bigger than we are as people. So cows weigh about 1,500 pounds, so it takes quite a bit of medicine. So those are kind of big pills, but this is a really big pill, huh? Awesome. So this is the biggest pill that we might give a cow, and this one has a certain mineral in it. What mineral is in milk that's healthy, helps us with our bones? Right here. Oh, not B12, not rose. Calcium. calcium, very good, calcium. So this is a big calcium pill. And we give these to cows because when a cow has her baby calf, she starts producing milk. And then when she's producing milk, she's putting calcium from her body into that milk. And when they start, after they have their calf, they start to do that pretty fast. And sometimes they get low in calcium in their system. So then they need a calcium boost. So we give them one of these calcium pills and this will dissolve in their stomach over about 10 hours. And so this is a great big pill. And so when I want the cow to take this pill, do I just hand it to her and say, take this with a glass of water? No, that wouldn't work very good. So what we have is we have this piece of equipment here, and we actually put this pill in here, and we put it down the side of their mouth, and then we push the plunger, and they'll swallow this whole without any problems at all. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty big. You wouldn't think they'd be able to swallow it, but they can. And then another thing, here's another kind of medicine that some of you may have in your house. A pink kind of medicine that you take for an upset stomach or not feeling good. Serena. You took it this morning. Pepto-Bismol. So this, this is kaopectate or Pepto-Bismol. And this is something we give a cow for an upset stomach if she wasn't feeling well. And so we give her a whole gallon jug of this, not just a little teaspoon or a cupful of it. 
and not the greatest taste and stuff in the world, but it makes them feel better. Oh, they don't mind. I think it's cherry flavored. <laughs> no. All right, another thing. Has anybody ever been in the hospital or visit somebody and you see these bags of fluids hanging in there? Yep. So this is fluids. If a baby calf would get dehydrated or short on fluid in their body, or a cow, we use these bags of fluids. These are the same exact bags of fluids that they use in the hospital. And what we'll do is we'll put a needle into the, a vein into the cow's or, cat or calf's neck, and then we'll run these fluids in to help them feel better, to provide them energy and provide them fluids if they're not feeling good enough to eat or drink on their own. Uh, a couple of other things. Here's a magnet up here. What sticks to a magnet? Dominic. A magnet will stick to a refrigerator because it's made of what, Jada? Metal. Made of metal. So all of the cows wandering around the farm here have one of these magnets in their stomach. And we do that as we give them, that's a prevention because sometimes by accident a nail or a piece of wire might get mixed into the feed. And if, if it does and they happen to accidentally eat it, then it'll stick to this magnet floating around in their stomach. And then that it prevents it from poking their stomach wall and causing them to feel pain or getting an infection from it. So kind of a neat thing that each of them have a magnet. A few other things. Sometimes we need to do a surgery on a cow. Uh, sometimes I need to do a surgery to help fix their stomach or if they have something else wrong. And here's an example of some of the surgery tools that we'd use. And these curved things in the middle here, these are the needles that I would use for putting the stitches in. So have any of you ever had stitches? Yep. So we'll do the same thing with cows. And here's an example. Sometimes those little threads in your stitches are so small you can hardly see it, but I have to use a lot bigger thread when I'm putting stitches into a cow because they're just a lot bigger. Uh, one other kind of neat thing right down here on the bottom, this is a cow shoe. Did anybody know the cows wore shoes? Well, they do every now and then. Not very often. We don't want them to have to wear a shoe, but when you look at a cow's foot, she has two toes. And sometimes she may get a, some type of a soreness or some kind of a problem on one of those toes. And so what we do is we'll actually glue this shoe onto the healthy toe. And what that does is when she walks, all of the weight is on the healthy toe. And it takes all the pressure off the sore one so that it can heal. And so this will stay glued onto her foot for about a month and then it'll come off and hopefully by that time that foot is all healed up so that she doesn't have to feel the pain of walking around on a sore foot. And I guess with that, do you have, how much time do we have yet? Pretty We're pretty good. Anybody have any questions for me? Right here. This big glove. So this big glove, you can see it has fingers in the bottom, so I'll put that on my arms and if I'm helping to deliver a baby calf, then I'll put that on so that I stay clean through the process. And so that's part of, if right back here there's a pen of cows, as you go out the door you can peek in at them. Those are all the cows that are going to have the baby calves in the next few days. So they're all in there resting right now comfortably. And unfortunately nobody's having a calf right now, so we won't get to see a new baby today. Um, Micah, you have a question? Um, why do you guys have to use a drench gun? Oh, a drench gun. So we'll use this. There's certain... Uh, certain medicines that we'll give that are fluids and the same thing we'll put this in the corner of their mouth and we'll squirt it on the back of their tongue so that they can swallow it. It's like one of the things is we'll give a substance it's kind of like a sugar water to provide them energy and we'll fill this up with that and then we'll squirt it in the back of their mouth and let them swallow it. Question here? Um, you might um, put the magnet in their mouth, right? Yep, they'll go in their mouth and they'll swallow it. And it it'll go down into the reticulum, which is one of their four compartments of their stomach, if, and it just floats in there. What if uh, there's too much magnet and um, too much um, uh, nail? Oh, too much? Most cows will never eat a nail in their, life, in their life. It just rarely happens, and so we don't really run into having too many nails. It's just, it's just a preventative thing to keep them from getting sick. Very few cows would eat a nail in a year. You know, maybe only one in a whole year or one in two years, but we just put that in their prevention to keep them healthy. All right, with that. Thank you. All right, thank you guys. Have fun in the rest of your tour. How many of you guys have ever been on a farm before?
How many of you guys ridden in uh, any equipment already? Yeah, a couple of you? Well, uh, this is just some of the equipment that we have here at Hunky Farms. I don't know if you guys can see behind the chopper here is our, one of our biggest tractors we have with our digger that we pull behind it. And the digger is what we use to uh, work the soil over before we plant corn. So after that soil is smooth, this is what a corn planter looks like. And what we use to uh, plant corn. As you guys see, this is called a marker that's on the corn planter. And that's what that tractor follows. That's what that tractor follows to uh, plant corn. In our, in our corn plant, or in our tractor that we plant corn with, we have GPS. How many of your parents got GPS in their vehicles? Does it drive the vehicle? I mean, do they still have to put their hands on the wheel, right? Well, the GPS in my tractor will actually drive the, drive the tractor. So I can take my hands off the tractor and it will drive itself. Pretty nice, huh? So that, we have that GPS in there so we can make nice, perfectly straight rows through the field. And then I can map it out. There's a big screen in the tractor that maps that all out. So after we the corn is all planted, we go back in and we chop the corn after it's fully grown. This is what it looks like when we're chopping corn. This is a chopper. He's chopping right into the truck. So it's coming out that yellow spout right there. No, it's, it's all right. I'm good. So I'm going to take a guess how fast that corn comes out of that spout right there. Out that yellow spout. Yep. About... Miles per hour. Um, about 10 miles per hour? More than 10 miles per hour. Yep. 20? More than 20 miles per hour. One more guess. About 100 miles per hour. So that's a lot of corn that's coming out of that spout quite fast. So we can fill a truck in about four minutes. So our trucks are range from 36 feet long. We fill a trailer. You guys see all the corn that's going into that chopper right there? You see how tall it is? It's as tall as the chopper. So you guys can kind of look. That chopper is how tall, and that's how tall the corn is. So this is an eight-roll corn head, though. So we can chop eight rows of corn at one time. So your parents' vehicles get, uh, what kind of miles per gallon do they get? You know, do they get 20 miles per gallon, 25 miles per gallon? How many uh, gallons of gas do they use when they drive in a mile? You know, average is about 25. So in this chopper, if you want to take a guess how many gallons of fuel I, fuel I use in an hour? 100. Less than 100. 50? Less than 50. One more guess. 20? Right on. About 20 to 23 gallons an hour of diesel fuel I use. So this chopper has a, a fuel tank of 250 gallon fuel tank. And I can go through that chopping corn, we can go through that in a day. So you take 250 gallons of diesel fuel times four dollars a gallon. It's quite costly to, to, chop, to fill this chopper up with fuel. So we always try to be very efficient on the farm and, and work as efficiently as possible. When you guys uh, eat your food, you uh, cut it up with a fork and a knife, right? Make it into smaller pieces. Well, this is our fork and knife here. This chopper has 48 knives in it. So it'll, it cuts the food up, the hay and corn silage, I can cut from a quarter inch length to one inch long. And that can be all, I can change it all from inside the cab while driving. How many of you guys play Wii? My kids love playing Wii. So operating this chopper, it's just like playing Wii. There's a joystick in there, and it's got all the buttons on it. So it's all controlled by, by one hand. You got a question? It's really, yes, it's, it's, it's very dangerous. Your always, safety is always a number one concern when you're operating this piece of equipment. <clears throat> we always make sure, because you guys look on the front here, all these yellow things in the front all turn at once. So we always make sure that there's nobody in front of this machine around, or around it while we're operating it. If you guys look behind us, that is our sprayer. We share that with uh, two other farms, and that's what we use to spray our corn and our hay. If you guys can see in this picture here, this is a sprayer of spraying corn. So that's a 90-foot boom on there. So I'm spraying 90 feet at one time, one pass. And that sprayer also has GPS on it. Yep. How do you, how do you spray the corn? 
out of it? Well, in the center there is a big tank, and I can hold a thousand gallons of water, and I can put the chemicals in there, and the yellow boom, that 90 feet, that'll come all the way down to, to about this high. So when it's nice and calm day, that's when I go out and spray. So this is just some of the equipment that we have at Hunky Farms. Has anybody else got any other questions of uh, the equipment here? Yep. How do you put gas in the tractors? How do we put diesel fuel? Well, behind the cab, there's a big tank, and we climb up there and put it in. Also, with that sprayer behind you, we've got to climb the steps and go up on top and fill it up. Yep. Do you have to go to special gas places to get the gas? Nope, the diesel fuel truck comes right to our farm. So we have a tank that holds a thousand gallons of diesel fuel on the farm here. And when we're chopping corn, because we'll have this chopper running with four trucks and probably two other tractors, so we can go through about a thousand gallons of diesel fuel in a day. Whoa. We're filling all those pieces of equipment up. So when we're chopping corn, we chop corn for about five, six days in a row. The fuel truck will come every day and fill us up. Yep, you got a question? To fill it, up. to fill it up with uh, diesel fuel, a couple minutes. Our, our uh, hose that we use to pump it in there is pretty big. Any other questions about the equipment? What was your gas mileage again? We use 20, 20 gallons of fuel an hour. But what does that equate to? So, like, if I get 25 gallons. You're getting 25 gallons. You're getting 25 miles per gallon. What do you get per mileage? Mileage? I don't know how many miles. I don't travel very far. And so in an hour's time, I can chop 50 acres in a day. So if you figure that out, 50 acres in a day. So I'm chopping not even. It's less than 10 miles. Well, it's, not, it's not nowhere near miles. miles. I'm, I'm under miles. We usually don't push that button very often. Okay. We don't want to know what we're, how much fuel we're using. Yep. Um, how fast can this equipment go? This sprayer, the chopper can go 18 miles an hour down the road. The sprayer can go about 25 miles per hour down the road. When you're in the field, how fast are you going? When we're chopping corn, about 4 miles an hour. But when I'm spraying, I can go up about 10 to 11 miles an hour. Because that... The sprayer's got air, four airbags on it, so it's all air ride controlled. And today I'm going to talk to you about a day in the life of a cow. Now the building that you guys are standing in right now is what we call a freestall barn. And the reason we call it that is because, did you notice, none of the cows are tied up. The cows are free to walk around the building. They can eat feed, they can drink water, they can lay down. They can pretty much do whatever they want while they're up in this building. The only time they leave this building is when they go up to the milking parlor to be milked, which they do several times a day. Now you saw all this feed down in front of the animals, right? <laughs> oh, listen up, boys and girls. You see all the feed down in front of the animals there? Did you learn about what's in that yet? Yeah. 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 So that's stuff that I don't think you and I want to eat for breakfast, right? Maybe. Yeah. No, cows are pretty cool, though, because they can take that stuff and they can make it into meat and milk when we can't. And part of the reason they can do that is because they have a stomach that has how many compartments? Four. Four. Very good. And the biggest of that is the rumen. Now, let's see if we can find one. You see that cow standing up behind the post there? Yeah. She's chewing. Do you know what that's called? Um, Yell it out. Cud. Cud. Very good. The cow re regurgitates her food and continues to chew it so she can digest it and break it down and make milk. We like to see cows chewing their cud. When they're chewing their cud, we know that they're healthy and that they're feeling good. Now this feed is put down fresh once a day and it's pushed up several times a day so the cows always have access to it. Now on either side of you here, we've got crossovers and those crossovers have big water tanks in them. It's really important that cows have fresh, clean water at all times so that they can make lots of milk because milk is primarily made up of water. So these cows have food, these cows have water. You can see some of the cows are laying down back there in the stalls. Each one of those stalls has a mattress in it. And that mattress is covered with sawdust or shavings to help keep the cows clean. 
We really like to see cows that are laying down and chewing their cud because we know that they're making milk. Now we'll walk down just a little bit further. And you, you guys can probably see there's a, a line in the middle of the pen. That line is attached to a barn scraper and that scrapes all the manure away from the cow's feet so their feet stay nice and clean and healthy. It scrapes the manure down to the middle of the barn and in the middle of the barn there's a big holding vat. That manure is then pumped out onto, into the lagoon and it's used on the fields as fertilizer this time of year for the plants that the, the farmers are going to grow. Now all these cows on this farm are one breed. Can you tell me what breed of cow this is? Yell it out. Holsteins. Wow, you guys are great. Yep, these are all Holsteins. But there are some red and white ones, right? Did you notice those guys? Those are called red and white Holsteins. They're kind of a cousin to the black and white. Now even though these are all Holsteins, every cow has a different set of spots. With 700 cows on this farm, do you think you could tell them all apart by their spots? I certainly couldn't. That's why we put the ear tags in the cow's ears. Those ear tags go in when the calves are little babies. And that number stays with the cow from the day she's born until the day that she leaves the farm. The reason there are two of them in the ears is because some cows will lose them. And I don't want to be the person that has to figure out which cow is which when a cow loses their ear tag. So they put two in in order to keep track of who is who. Now the honkies know exactly which cows are in each one of these pens and they keep track of that with a computer system up in the office. Now we'll move down a little bit further to the holding um, pit for the manure and you guys will see where the cows go up to be milked. Now the cows are milked three times a day and that's really the only time they leave the barn here. You can see this red and white cow here is at the water tank. So you can see just how big those water tanks are. And there's one on the other side as well. And look at this, we've got good timing. This barn scraper has just scraped this whole pen and gotten all the manure down into the pit. Now if you look over to my left, this is where the cows go up to the milking parlor. And this group is up there right now. Somebody came through the barn, one of the employees, and they, they moved all the cows up into this area. And while they did that, they scraped down all of the beds, the cows' beds, and evened out the bedding so that when they come back, they've got a nice, clean, fresh bed to lay in. Most of the cows, when they come back from the milking parlor, will stop at the feed bunk and get something to eat. They'll get a drink of water, and then they'll go lay down for a while. Now today's kind of a chilly day, right? I see a lot of hats and winter jackets back on you guys. This is perfect weather for a cow. They love this kind of weather. When it gets too hot, they get really uncomfortable because they're pretty big animals, right? So the honkies take a lot of precautions to try to keep the cows cool. You see the big fans in the pens throughout the barn? That helps to move the air through the barn. There's also a sprinkler system, that water line above the feed rail, that sprinkler system can get turned on and the cows are misted several times a day. That along with the fans helps to keep them nice and cool. This barn is a curtain side barn. You can see the curtains are down today because we want to take advantage of the nice wind and the fresh air. On a really cold, windy, snowy day, we'll put the curtains up to keep the cows warm. We'll also put the curtains up on a really hot, humid day because that whole wall behind you will be full of fans. And the honkies can get a really nice breeze going through this barn using those fans and by keeping the, the curtains up. So cow comfort is really important and keeping cows nice and cool is really important to help them make more milk. And we'll walk up a little further. The honkies can go into their computer system and they can punch in 45.99 and they'll be able to tell exactly how old that cow is, how many calves she's had, if she's been sick, any of that information they keep track of using a computer system. Yes? After the milk, do they just come back in? After their milk, do they just come back in? You can see these girls are just coming back, and they're probably wondering what we're doing in their barn. But like I said before, they'll usually come back in, they'll eat something, they'll get a drink of water, and they'll lay down.
Yes. How old do you think this farm is? How old do you think this farm is? That is a great question for Jack when you get to that station. He'll be able to tell you exactly. It's quite, quite old. It's been around for a lot of years. Yes. Do cows' heads get stuck in those things while they eat? Well, those are really cool. I'll tell you about those right now. Those are what we call headlocks. And the cows stick their heads through them to eat, right? You've seen that. The other thing that's really neat is there's a little piece of metal right here. We can throw a switch, and that'll flip that piece of metal up to the top. So when a cow puts her head in and closes it up, she'll get locked up. We lock cows up if we have to take a temperature, if we have to give them shots, if we just have to check because we don't think there's something or we think there's something wrong with that cow, we can lock her up right here in her own pen, in her own home where she's comfortable. We can take care of that cow, do whatever we need to do, and then we turn that switch again and she can open it back up and go on. It's really safe for the cow and it's really safe for the person that's handling the cow. So that's where those headlocks are really kind of neat. And as you can see, when they're wide open, the cows can get in and out of them at any time. They can do pretty much whatever they want. Now, this is just one way of raising dairy cows, right? Have you guys all seen cows that are out eating pasture and living in big open fields? That's another way to, to raise cows. Those farmers usually bring the cows into the barn to be milked, and then they, they chase them out when they're done. This is a different system where the cows go up to the parlor to be milked, and then they go back to their pens. There's no right or wrong way to make milk or to dairy farm, but one thing that's really important to all farmers is to take care of their cows really well. Did you notice that it's really pretty quiet in this barn? Mm -hmm. With all these cows, wouldn't you expect a whole lot more mooing? Me too. But when cows have everything they need, they've got feed to eat, they've got water to drink, they've got a nice, soft, comfortable bed to lay in, they really don't make a lot of noise. So if we've got happy, comfortable cows, they don't say much. Now, if you go up to the calf barn at feeding time, when all those little babies are hungry for supper, you're going to hear a whole lot more noise. But once they're fed, they're back to being happy and, and content as well. Do we have any other questions quickly while we move down? We'll walk down a little further to the end. Now you can kind of see some of these cows are a little nosier than others too. Some of these cows have different personalities. They like to be approached, they like to check things out, but there are other cows that just like to be away from people and they like their norm. It's not normal for them to have a bunch of people in their barn. They're used to certain people coming through at certain times of day. So this is really kind of a different situation for them to see all these people in their, in their home, if you will. Any other questions? Yes. Do all the cows get along? Well, have you ever heard of a pecking order with chickens? Usually there's a boss cow in every group. There's somebody who wants to be the top dog, the most important. And the same thing goes with cows. That's why the honkies really don't like to mix these groups of cows up very much. If a cow gets put in a group, unless something's wrong or there's a problem, they like to try to leave them in the group. Because anytime you introduce a new cow, it's like when you guys have a new kid in class, right? Everybody's kind of got to get used to them and figure out where everybody fits. It's the exact same thing with cows. They have to get used to where they fit in, uh, in the class, if you will. So they tend to group cows by um, age and where they are in their milking cycle. Each one of these cows has a baby every year, and that's how they continue to milk. And then they also get a couple of months off um, when we call them dry cows, where they just kind of get to walk around and eat and, and do pretty much whatever they want. So these cows will be put in pens based on where they are at in that cycle. And they're also fed accordingly, too, which Brian might have told you about when you were down in that other building. So it's really, um, you know, they've really got this down to a science, and they take care of their cows really well to make sure they can get the most out of them and uh, keep them as, as happy and comfortable as possible. So when you guys walk to the barn, you notice a yellow ear tag in our cow's ears with a number on it. This is how we identify all the animals on our farm. Instead of giving them a name like you guys got named when you were born by your parents, we're just going to put an ear tag in their ear like an earring. And this is how we identify all the heifer calves on this farm. 
The bull calves are going to go to market when they're about one week old, where somebody else is going to buy them and raise them. And once they're big enough, they're going to enter the food chain. We only keep the heifer calves on this farm because only girls are the only animals that can give milk. A cow carries the calf for nine months, just like people. It's best if the cow only has one calf at a time, but once in a while they do have twins. Also, the cow does calf by herself, but if they do need help, we can assist them, or if we need more help, we'll call the veterinarian to come out and help the cow have her calf. What's this yellow stuff that the calf is laying on? <laughs> nope, different answer than hay. What is that? No. So it's an S. Do you know? We call it straw. How we tell oh, the difference is straw is yellow in color, and straw comes from wheat. And that's what the cows and the calves will lay on. It keeps them nice and warm. And hay is green in color, and that's what the cows and the calves are going to eat. This is also a calf blanket. We're going to put this on the calf in the winter time, and this will help the calf get nice and warm. <laughs> we will take the calf away from its mom when they're about one hour old, and we're going to bring them up here into the calf barn. And we're going to put the calf in each individual pen, and we keep the calves separated so they don't spread germs from one calf to another calf. The calves will stay in their boxes until they're two months of old, and at that time is what we call weaning time, and that's when we are take the milk away from them and we, they only will drink water the rest of their life. Also, they're going to get moved back to this part of the barn and they're going to be in groups of eight to ten calves. And that's the first time they're going to get to see other calves. Another feature of our calf barn is that this tube is running down the center of the alley, bringing the fresh air from outside into the calf barn so the calves always have fresh air to breathe. Another thing that we do with our calves is we vaccinate them. Just like when you guys go to the doctor, you get vaccinated, we will vaccinate our calves so we can keep them healthy and so they can be, grow nice and strong for us and give us a good product. Are there any questions? Yep. Can uh, is is there any um, red and white Holstein babies? Yes, there, there's black and white Holstein, so these are black and white, and we have red and white Holstein. So the red and white cows that you see when you came to the barn, those are red and white Holsteins. Yep. Um, that's, can they only have one or the twins and one, or that, do they have just twins? Twins are common, or somewhat common. Um, once in a great while they do have triplets, but that's very uncommon for them to have triplets, okay? That's if they only have one cow, or one calf from each cow. Yes? How many um, calves do you okay. have in here? In here? Yeah. In here we have about 75 calves, and we have one calf born usually every day on this farm, and we calf year round, so every day we have some calves born. The most that we have ever had in one day was 12 calves in one day. Oh. you have a question? <laughs> Is well, how many? What, what, what is the most in the barn? How many, cat, what, how many calves did one cow have? Yeah. Um, the most, I think our oldest cow is about 10 years old, so that would put her about eight calves that she had. They usually have a calf every year, is what you want. Like all at once? All at once? We only had twins, we never had triplets. Twins or the triplets stay in one, and then the ones that only have one stay in one. Nope, we, if they're twins, we'll still separate them Thanks. in their own boxes. Yep. And does the mom, the cow, ever get to see the cows? Nope, we take them away. It's a good question. We take the calves away from the mom so we can take a better job, take care of a better job of the calves. And also, the mom has to go to the parlor three times a day to get milk. Okay, so they really don't have time to take care of their calves. 
and they won't know they're they're not bonded enough with their parents yet or their moms. Um. So why is you like in the same one? We just have these here for you guys to see them today. Um, okay. Do you have a question? Yep. <laughs> yep. In a little bit. Do you have a question? Make it. She has one calf usually every year. Okay. All right. Do you have a place to roll? Come pet the calves. Hi, boys and girls. Are you having fun at the farm today? Yeah. Learn lots of brand new things. Yeah. How many of you like milk? Awesome. Way back when Christopher Columbus came and brought in a cow to Wisconsin, how do you think you got your milk? Do you think you went to the mini mart? No. no. As the settlers moved across our country, you would often see the covered wagon and a cow going behind. Because if they wanted milk, they had to take their milk along with them. And a cow, right? Okay, they moved across America, they settled, and they started to farm. They might have one, two, or three cows on the farm, but by the 1830s, farm wives found out that they were producing too much milk and they didn't want to waste it. So what they did was they made cheese. So our farm wives were the first cheese makers here in Wisconsin. The cheese makers, they'd make cheese, and they learned how to make cheese by the old people that would carry milk around in goat stomachs. And the enzymes that were in the goat stomachs started to make cheese. So that's how we learned that there was cheese to be made. Uh, when they, the farm wives were making cheese, they found out that they needed to consolidate their cheese so they could make a better product. So that's when the cheese factories came into being. One of the things that the cheese factories are that we needed in order to go to the cheese factories were these milk cans here. These milk cans um, had a filter on top. It's called a strainer. We would dump the milk in there and then we would put the cover on and we put the cover on the wagon um, put the can on the wagon and take it to the cheese factory. That's how we transported the milk. As the years went on, we found that we got tanks in our refrigerated tanks in the milk house and we needed to strain the milk there too, so we used this on top of the refrigerated tanks. We brought the milk from the milk machines like I have over here and we would dump the milk into the strainer on top of the bulk tanks. Boys and girls, this was often their job to carry the milk from the milk machine to the strainer in the bulk tank. And in early years, they often had to milk the cows as well. So boys and girls had a real place on the farm. Sometimes, can you imagine having to milk the cow before you could have breakfast in the morning? Before you walked to school? Pretty awesome, huh? So... Um, technology has evolved the milking industry here on the farm. I think you've already seen the milking parlor. You've seen the modern way of milking cows. Well, there's one more step above that, and that is robotic milking. And I haven't even seen that yet. I'm eager to see it. It's a cow comes into a stall, and the milk machine goes on, and there's nobody around. There, it's done all without any human person being there. So that's pretty awesome. Just like technology is in the classroom, technology is on our farms as well. Milk is one of the safest products that we have to drink. It is tested here on the farm. It's tested before it comes off the truck. It is tested in many, many different places. It um, is pasteurized. That raises the temperature to 165 degrees for 15 seconds, and then it's cooled down real fast. And that takes care of the microorganisms or germs that might be in the milk, if there is any. And then we also homogenize it. If you take milk right from the cow, you're going to find, if you put it in a glass, you're going to see that the cream raises to the top. And people don't like that, so we homogenize it. We break up the molecules in it so that that all stays mixed. It takes two days for the milk from the cow to the grocery store. The milk leaves here in a big, long silver tanker, 
and it's about 6,000 gallons that go. This, the milk from this farm goes for drinking, but 90% of all our milk in Wisconsin goes to be made into cheese. Okay, Addie, the cow is being uh, ready to be milked. How many of you milked her before? Awesome, so we got some veteran milkers here. Okay. I need a, where's my teachers? I need a couple teachers here. They need to milk the cow first. I'm gonna milk them first. Okay. Yep, we got some teachers here. Go ahead. Squeeze, squeeze, come on, squeeze. <laughs> Good job. My name is Mrs. Andre, and I represent not only Jack and Jim, I represent all the dairy farmers in Wisconsin. So we have over 11,000 dairy farmers. That's how many bosses I have. That's a lot of people to report to. But it's really a fun job because we know that dairy is a big part of Wisconsin's economy. Um, over $26.5 billion comes to Wisconsin every single year just because of cow's milk. So it's really, really a big part of Wisconsin's business. Now, Wisconsin is the state we live in, right? We know that Wisconsin is famous for lots of different foods um, other than just milk, but we also know that Wisconsin is America's dairy land. I know in third and fourth grade, you learn a lot about Wisconsin's agriculture, and you also learn about healthy eating. Um, how many food groups do we need to eat from every single day to take care of our bodies? How many food groups? We have more than three. There's, there's how many food groups? Five, yes. So we have five food groups that we need to eat just on Thursday. Every day. Every day we have to take care of our body by eating healthy. What are some of those food groups? Let's review what, what uh, one of the food groups is. Um, milk. milk or the dairy group. Water. Uh, water is something that's essential every single day, so that's an essential nutrient. Cheese. Um, um, that would be in the dairy group. Meat, protein, so we have the dairy group, we have the protein group, the fruit group, eat your fruits and vegetables, vegetables. and then the last one, anybody know? The grains of the bread, yeah, breads, grains, all rice, pasta, cereal, those types of groups, so those are really important to our bodies. So we want to make sure that we're taking care of our body by providing it nutritious foods every single day. And the nice thing is, in Wisconsin, we have lots of foods that are available to us to make sure that we can take care of those bodies that we have. Now, ultimately, who is responsible for what you put in your mouth? You are. It's a big job taking care of yourself, right? So your parents want to help you, I want to help you, your teachers want to help you, but ultimately, you get to choose, right? So we want to make sure that you're providing healthy foods um, every single day. We know that in Wisconsin, that we have lots and lots of cows. It's um, something that Wisconsin is known for. We actually have more cows than we have kids that go to school. We have over 1.2 million cows in Wisconsin, and cows produce lots of what? Milk. Milk is really important because it has lots of calcium. Calcium is very important to one particular part of our body. Do you know what calcium helps grow long, grow strong? What does it help? It starts with the letter B. Your bones. Yes, you have over 200 bones in your body. And so those bones, in order as they grow um, healthy, we want to make sure that the calcium is deposited in those bones so your bones can stay strong. So that's really important. So milk um, is one of the ways we can get calcium, but we can take milk and we can make it into other dairy foods. What's some other dairy foods that we can make from milk? Yes. Cheese, wonderful. Ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> um, strawberry milk, we can make flavored milk, yes. Yogurt. Yogurt, <gasps> yes. Uh, well, milk can be an ingredient too, so that kind of gets confusing. No, that's okay, because milk can be an ingredient that we can add to foods. Cake. Um, and same thing with cake, so sometimes milk can be added to a food. But milk, cheese, and yogurt, you guys got the big three, because those have the most calcium. Those have the most calcium and so you need three servings a day from the big three, milk, cheese, or yogurt. So ice cream, butter, sour cream, whipped cream, those are sometimes foods, but milk, cheese, and yogurt are always foods. Does that make sense? Okay, so we know that there's an animal that produces the milk. What's that animal called? 
a cow, right. Is a cow a boy or is a cow a girl? So raise your hand if a cow is a girl. Okay, put your hands down. Raise your hand if a cow is a boy. Put your hands down. Raise your hand if it's both. A cow can be a boy and a girl. Okay, put your hands down. Raise your hand if you just don't know. On this farm, do we? Any farm. The answer is, cows are always, always girls. Only the girls can produce milk. So on this farm, it's called a dairy farm. So the cows here all produce milk. All that milk is white. So when milk comes out of the cow, and you've probably seen that already at the milk parlor, cow's milk comes out white. So that's really important that all cow's milk starts off white. Um, white milk is a great nutritional source, full of nine nutrients. And then we make all those other foods, like cheese and yogurt, from that white milk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you some questions. And those questions, I'm going to need an answer of a food that's on my board that best fits the, the, um, the questions that I give to you. So I'm looking for a fruit, and this fruit is a berry. This berry grows in marshes or bogs. And actually, it's a high source of vitamin C, and it's our state fruit. A cherry? Um, not a cherry, but you're close. Um, what is this called? Because you're right. Who can help me out? Raspberry. Not a raspberry. Close. Cranberry. Cranberries. Right. We have lots of cranberry marshes or bogs, and so cranberries are an important fruit. It is our state fruit. I am looking for a type of milk. This type of milk is probably a third and fourth grader's favorite milk at lunch. And we also know that high school athletes are using this as a sports recovery drink. Chocolate, Chocolate milk. Chocolate milk has lots of protein, lots of carbohydrates, lots of electrolytes and fluid and calcium to help athletes' body. It's also a great nutritional source for you to get your calcium in every single day as well. I'm looking for a protein food. This protein food is an aquaculture, which means it grow, it's, it's in the water. It has a healthy fat called omega-3 fatty acids to help our heart. Yes? Uh, fish. fish, yes. So fish, we have fish farms. And this fish happens to have a special name. This is a five-letter fish, and it begins and it ends with the very same letter. Uh, you know the name of that fish? Uh, begins with the same letter that it ends with. Trout? Good job, trout. Oh. We have trout farms. It's not our state fish. Our state fish is called the muscalunge or the muskie, but we have trout farms in Wisconsin. I'm looking for a grain. This grain, um, actually uses a combine to harvest it, and in nine seconds, a combine can harvest 90 loaves of this. What grain am I? The bread. Yep, and what, what grain do we use to make bread? Who can help her out? Wheat. Wheat, yes. So, boys and girls, you need um, your grains every single day. You need at least six servings of grain. Half of those servings should be whole grains. So, whole wheat bread, whole wheat cereal, whole wheat pasta, a great source of nutrition because it has fiber in it as well. I am looking for a dairy product that's made from milk. We have over 600 kinds of this. I'm looking for a particular one. Wisconsin has been famous for this type since 1910, and you might like it in the form of mild, medium, or sharp. And what kind of cheese? Not American. Type of cheese that used to hurt. Yes, cheddar cheese. Wisconsin is famous for cheddar, and we actually have cheese as old as 15 year old cheddar. So we have cheese older than you are. It's an aged cheddar, and it is a really sharp flavor. It's a wonderful cheese that we can enjoy. I'm looking for a vegetable. This is a stringy green vegetable full of potassium, full of fiber. Yes. Green. Um, Jack climbed up this. Green beans, excellent. So green beans, Wisconsin um, is a leading producer in green beans as well. Potassium is really helpful not only for our hearts but for our muscles, also a great source of fiber. I'm looking for another vegetable. This grows underneath the ground. Um, we know that Wisconsin is famous for this. We're third in the nation for this. Might be a fourth grader's favorite vegetable. Not peas, grows underneath the ground. Not carrots. Potatoes. Lots and lots of potato farms that we have in, in Wisconsin. We have a huge amount of sandy soil right in the middle of the state, which is perfect for growing potatoes. 
I have two clues left. First, I'm looking for a protein food. This protein food has lots of zip, zinc, iron, and protein. One large animal produces enough to make 720 quarter pounders in the red. Yes. Uh, not a cow, actually beef. We have beef farms as well. So um, this symbolizes beef. And last but not least, I have another fruit. There's about 200 seeds on the outside, a great source of vitamin C. Can only be picked by hand. Not cherries, on the outside the seeds are. Strawberries, yes. So we have lots and lots of strawberries. We have over a thousand acres of strawberries. An acre is about the size of a football field. So if you think about how big a football field is, we have a thousand football fields of strawberries in Wisconsin. And most of our strawberries go into making jam. We can make over seven million jars of jam just from all those great strawberries. So boys and girls, you need five food groups every single day. You need milk, you need fruits, vegetables, grains, and protein. And we want to make sure that we make some healthy choices to grow and keep our body healthy. And also, what else do we need to do other than eating healthy? We need to what? Uh, clean, up and clean up. We need to help clean up all oh, your parents as a bonus point. Yes. Exercise. We need to exercise. You need to exercise at least 60 minutes a day in order to uh, keep your body active. So we want to fuel up with healthy foods. We want to exercise 60 minutes a day to keep your body healthy and strong. Yes and you want to drink healthy with lots of water, lots of water. So have a great day. Thank you so much for your time and enjoy your day on the farm.